many men that served our country were at that base that are suffering from male breast cancer, which has a stigma of its own. And to have them finally you know, show some recognition that, that these men deserve to be compensated and, and um, taken care of, um, that's the positive. That's the takeaway from this. Today, we're joined by Hunter Skolnick to discuss a new government study that ties Camp Lejeune water contamination to new cancers, including thyroid cancer and male breast cancer. NIB Direct excels in high conversion mass tort lead generation, focused on cultivating enduring partnerships with our clients. With decades of digital marketing expertise paired with our in-house legal experts, we stand as a trusted partner for leading trial lawyers. Our unwavering dedication to transparency, compliance, and exceptional service ensures we are delivering top-notch marketing solutions and strategic mass tort opportunities, enabling and empowering you to make meaningful connections with clients who need your legal help. Reach out to us at nibdirect.com or via email at info at nibdirect.com. Hunter, thanks so much for joining me on a short notice. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. So report is finally published. Uh, we've all been waiting to see what drops uh, from this new government study about the water contamination in Camp Lejeune. Uh, why don't you give me your, your takeaway as to what the report finds? Um, what's, what do we really all need to know? Well, first and foremost, um, the, the study, uh, which is a fairly robust one, um, she tells us that there are more cancers, there's more disease, more cancer associated with exposure to the water at Camp Lejeune. Um, our military families um, are suffering. At first, the federal government limited the number of diseases that they said were caused by the, the contaminated water. Uh, and, and now, you know, we're talking 20, 30 years later, we get a new study today that tells us non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, lung cancer, oral cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. And, and what's most interesting is that there is also support for male breast cancer, which they have been doggedly uh, you know, claiming was not um, caused by this. And we know there are many men that served our country were at that base that are suffering from male breast cancer, which has a stigma of its own. And to have them finally you know, show some recognition that, that these men deserve to be compensated and, and um, taken care of, um, that's the positive. That's the takeaway from this. I'm glad you raised the male breast cancer issue not just because it's so important, but you know, on a personal level, um, although my uncle was not at Camp Lejeune, uh, my uncle had male breast cancer and has been outspoken about it. Uh, so I've been very familiar with this stigma. And uh, you know, on, uh, on top of the other uh, you know, trauma that these men are facing, now they finally get some validity to what they've been claiming all along. Um, we also know that, uh, you know, this is a, it's like you said, a fairly robust study. There were several hundred thousand individuals uh, who were, um, you know, who were part of this study. Um, you know, what about thyroid cancer? That to me seems like a, you know, a, a sort of hot topic. It wasn't on the original list. Uh, and, and now there's, there's a research to show that those uh, horrific chemicals are in fact linked to thyroid cancer. Uh, it's very important finding. There's no question about it. We know there are a large number of thyroid cancers diagnosed every year. And it was very easy for the government to say, this is just background incidents. It has nothing to do with your exposure to water at the camp. Now we know they're wrong, that, that they haven't been honest with the families. And another very important tool in the arsenal. Um, what we just hope is that the federal government increases the list of compensable injuries under their their early settlement program which has been going 
ridiculously slow, but they are at least add these diseases, which their own study now says is associated with the, with the water contamination. Uh, it's and time, it's time to come into 2024 and, and, and update uh, the diseases that, that, that they will come, you know, that will compensate for. You're talking about the elective option uh, program that is moving at a snail's pace. Do you think that's an understatement? Uh, say that again. That's an understatement. Uh, a very, very slow snail's pace. It's called window dressing. It looks good. Not much Sorry. substance to it so far. Yeah, I, I mean, do you think that it? in short order that that list may be uh, amended. I mean, we know that there is a, a deadline approaching for claims to be filed, right? And I say approaching because somehow it's already the end of January of 24. We have through August, uh, you know, any sense? You know, I don't think we're going to see the government picking up speed at all. I think they've, uh, they're inundated. Um, I think they, um, we're not prepared, um, you know, for the influx of cases, which they should have known were coming. The statute wasn't a surprise. We're more than a year and a half in almost. And, and you know, we have a court system that can't, you know, they, they just can't handle this case so far. Um, and we have the government sitting back offering a settlement program that really doesn't compensate everyone that should be compensated. And more importantly, it's a program that has limitations on who and what, when they will compensate. I mean, they putting artificial, you know, windows of if you were exposed more than, you know, 30, 35 years ago, I don't have it right off the top of my head. Uh, you know, it's arbitrary. then you don't, you don't qualify. Well, right. some of these cancers, if I handled a environmental exposure case or, or a pharmaceutical case where I said kidney cancer or lung cancer or you name the cancer was caused by exposure to a chemical or a drug, the, the defense in, in every case would be you got your diagnosis in less than 25 years. You can't be, it cannot be caused by, you know, expo the exposure that you're claiming. And they have some great experts that the industries have been relying upon for decades, who that is the go-to defense. It's gotta be 30, 35 years, you know, unless you're a child. Child is different because your cells, your cells um, um, replicate faster. Take out the childhood cancers, but for adult exposures, they're gonna say 25 years is really short. 30. Now, when you get to 30, maybe you can do it. 35, you're there. Now they flip, the, they flip the script. This time they're saying, if you get diagnosed more than 35 years ago, you're not, you can't be. It, the window can't be five years. You know, it, 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 it's, it's bad science and that's a problem with their early uh, settlement program. Um, sure. And, sure. and that has to be fixed. So they, I mean, it seems like they did it out of convenience um, with the, you know, with the program as slow as it is with this influx of, you know, new cancers and essentially stronger science to support the link between all of these chemicals and the diseases that have already been on, uh, you know, the presumptive list and the, the compensable list. Uh, you know, do you think that the government will expand not just the list of cancers, but perhaps the latency periods and just allow more individuals to choose the elective option? Not, they're not doing it yet. They're not getting the proper pressure from, you know, from, from the litigation. Uh, I, I, I'm not part of uh, how that case is proceeding, but it's certainly not giving them enough pressure to say, increase the diseases, increase the eligibility, uh, criteria or or non eligibility criteria change it because they're wrong. It's just not the science. It, this is right now window dressing for a lot of our clients. Yeah. I mean, we certainly have a lot that qualify, but they're not getting compens. They're not getting awards yet. Um, many fit in the definitions, but they've they, they've artificially locked out people that deserve to be compensated. 
These soldiers risked their lives for us. These, these Marines were there for us. We have got to be there for them. And, and the government shouldn't come up with artificial, artificial barriers after Congress and President Biden signed a law saying they should be compensated. These artificial barriers are administrative, uh, I mean, I, I hate to say it, ex administrative wonks. You know, people in the middle of the cogs who are coming up with ways I could save us some money from, from my department. And that's not what we should be doing for Marines and, and Marine families. Yeah, I mean, I know you have, and, and I have as well, talked to so many individuals who are just, I mean, they've been fighting for so many years. Uh, and some of them are now fighting for late family members who are no longer here. And, uh, you know, what they're up against just seems uh, inhumane, really. Uh, you know, these individuals, like you said, risked their lives, were uh, fighting for their country, and we just left them. You know, we just... You, know, they, they were you just, have to understand, uh, we're in a time, I mean, they, they fought for us, they fought for this law, and now they have to fight to get the law applied appropriately. That's wrong. There's very few things that Congress and the president have agreed on in these last four years. And you could look at how few bills have been passed and signed. First and foremost, they passed a bill to protect Marines and Marine families and civilians who were there to support our Marines. And this should not be, you know, subject to debate and, and legal maneuvering in court or, or, or game playing in administrative uh, applications in the Navy. It just shouldn't be. Congress has spoke, the president has spoke. It's the rare thing they've spoken together and we should be doing the right thing. I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, but I have a question for you. As, you know, let's say an attorney who's uh, in the space, maybe handling some cases, what, can attorneys do to help, uh, you know, sort of make this right? And, you know, the, the second part to that is what about individuals who are either at Camp Lejeune or know someone or have a family member? You know, what can we all do in order to, you know, stand up for what's right? I mean, you and I are talking about this right now because it's important, because we want people to hear about it. Uh, but what about everyone else? What, you know, what what is there to do in order to get the government to listen? First and foremost, number one, get a lawyer because Contrary to popular belief, you can't do this yourself. And, and I'm not saying hire me or hire any specific lawyer. Just to do it right, you better have a lawyer. Number two, that lawyer better get your proof of, of, of where you were at the base, when you were at the base, how long you were at the base, and get your medical records. Get that proof. It's not a lot to, to qualify. Um, for this, even the early, you know, the early settlement program. It's literally proof at the base. You get that. I mean, it's available. How long you were there? Were you there more than 31 days? Get your, me you know, get your, your um, medical records. You know, your proof of diagnosis. I mean, there are certain categories that many of our clients want to accept the dollar amounts. Is it the crazy verdicts that some people say they're going to get in a courtroom? No, but it'll be money now. Whether it's a hundred thousand or five hundred and fifty thousand, that's a lot of money going to the, you know, to the families and people who are dying every day. Get your medical records, get your proof, um, and and get it submitted. And then, like what we're doing, dog the military. Don't let the Navy sit on your claims. We are constantly like bombarding them with, you've got this. You've got our, you, we've checked the boxes. Why aren't you issuing awards? And we're not going to stop. And I have very frustrated clients asking me, well, this was an early settlement program. Why is it taking six months? Um, I, I don't have an answer to that, but it's very simple. It's my job to keep hammering away at the Navy and say, get mine reviewed and get mine awarded. And it's my client's, you know, option to accept it or not and do it quick. Sound advice, uh, you know, the elective option, which is supposed to be the quick out, right? Taking a long time. What are your thoughts on how long it will be until individuals who either don't qualify for the elective option or choose not to select it until they see their day in court and get their award? What, what time frame are we thinking about? 
I am, I, I am so sad to say, um, if you don't get the elective option, the vast majority of, of, of the victims will not be alive uh, when they get their day in court. Um, the court system is not is not getting this case moved fast. We had cases filed on the day uh, the act was passed. We're you know we're one year and almost a half later, and and there's no excuse. Those first half, handful of cases should have been immediately set for trial, um, and those were you know you know then they went through the whole you know process of organization and leadership and everything. I, I, I see filings every day, but cases aren't getting into trial. Yeah, no, so I'm no, very no. happy to hear one of the judges the other day said he's ready to start trying these cases. He's tired of the, of, of the spinning wheels. And I hope the other three judges that also have the cases in the district of Virginia, the Eastern district do the same thing. And they say enough, both sides, no more fighting. Get in a courtroom. You're going to have a jury. Get ready to select a jury. I want your experts here. I want everything ready to go. Um, that's what I we'd be doing. Uh, yeah, I, you know, and I, I just keep thinking: the more we talk, the more uh, you know our voices are heard, and and hopefully that does something to move the ball forward. But this is a an arduous process, and you know, as the attorney, it's it's one thing. As the individual who's suffering from you know one sometimes 30 different diseases because of the water contamination. I mean, it's a much, much different story. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to sit and talk about this. Uh, hopefully we, we see some movement um, and uh, you know, hopefully we see some expansion of the elective option and the uh, presumptive list. Well, we, we can only hope. It's, it's, just, um, it's just not fair to the families. Um, but I, I just have to, I, I have to stress, if you haven't retained a lawyer, you should. And if you retain a lawyer, it should be one uh, that really serves you uh, the way you serve the country um, and make sure that lawyer knows what they're doing. Um, and it's the time because you only have you only have until August of this year to get those cases or those claims filed. And that's not that far away. You know, we're it's, it's the last day of January 2024. You got seven months. Um, and that's the most important takeaway from this. If anyone is listening to this that potentially has a claim, um, you only have seven months to go. And thank you for having me as, you know, I always appreciate it, Lisa. Hunter, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>